This is my flute journey. Hey everyone, I am so excited about today's video because I am going to be sharing with you all the flutes that I've ever owned and played throughout the 26 years that I've been playing flute. I've never done a video quite like this one and actually a lot of you have been asking me what flute it is that I play on now, what ones I've played on in the past, including like when did I transition from a student model flute to an intermediate to a professional flute. So I am going to be telling you all about that in today's video. Also, I wanted to give you a reminder that if you are flute shopping, make sure to use my code Gina on the Flute Center of New York's website and you will get free shipping, an extended trial, and an extended warranty, as well as 10% off of all sheet music. Okay, let's dive right in. So the very first flute that I started playing was back when I was four years old. Um, I do want to preface this as like, why did I start playing flute? Well. If you haven't heard this story from me already, it's because my favorite movie at the time was The Little Mermaid. Prior to this, I had been wanting to play violin when I was four years old, and so my mom had started looking into lessons, and she knew nothing about violin whatsoever. <laughs> so she was a little worried. She's like, okay, can they start that young? You know, so she started looking into that. And when I was four, I watched Little Mermaid literally on repeat, and Many of you probably have not watched a movie on VHS, but I ruined the VHS because I watched it so many times. And there's a point in the movie when the prince plays a flute. Actually, it's a recorder, but I thought it was a flute at the time. And I told my mom, I want to play the flute. So that's why I started playing flute. And she was like, whew, I actually know about the flute a little bit. She had played, a, I think it was like a semester in high school flute. She mostly played clarinet, but she did a little bit of flute. So she did have one, actually, the one that she had from high school, which happened to be a Meinhardt. And given that I was starting when I was four years old, the straight head joint was just not going to work because I was so small. So my first flute was this one right here. This is not the exact flute. Um, we sold the body of the flute to a friend that I had in high school and the head joint we do still have, but it's at my parents' house in Utah. So I was not able to get it for this video, but Flute Center was so kind to lend me this one, which is very similar to what it was that I played when I was a little girl. So here you are. This is a Gemeinhart. <laughs> So this model is called the 2S PCH, and what's great is that for young players that are starting with a curved head joint, you can actually get both a curved head joint and a straight head joint with your flute when you purchase it, and then that way whenever you are ready to upgrade, it's very, very easy for you. We of course only bought the curved head joint part because my mom already had the body, so that's what we ended up doing, but uh, this was my first flute. How cute is it? I, I love holding it. It feels so tiny, but anyway, it has closed holes, it has an offset G of course, and it is silver plated, the entire flute is silver plated. And also, in case you were wondering, it is a student model flute. I ended up playing on that Gemeinhart for a pretty long time just because I was so small and I basically just needed to grow before getting a new flute. So I remember just playing with a lot of kids that were older than me just since I had been playing now for a while and they all had a straight head joint and I always felt like I was missing out because I didn't have a straight head joint so I kept begging my flute teacher, can I get one now, can I get one now? And then finally when I was nine years old, so I'd been playing for five years at this point, she said, you can get a straight head joint. And I was so excited. And the one that we decided on getting is this one right here. This is the exact flute. It is a Jupiter. It used to be called a 611 and it is now referred to as 1000. Anyway, we ended up getting the engraving right here. I saw this on a magazine that my flute teacher had and I was obsessed with it. And somehow I was able to talk my parents into engraving my head joint and I still think it's so beautiful. So interesting, um, it's actually a C foot joint. And the reason being is I did start out with a B foot joint and I was having a hard time holding up the flute because it was obviously a lot bigger and heavier than my last flute. So my flute teacher made the decision like, it's gonna be better for her to have a C foot joint. She's not really playing low Bs right now, so it's not necessary. So we ended up switching the foot joint out to a C foot joint. So that's 
something interesting. This one has open holes and the head joint is sterling silver. The rest is silver plated, both the body and the mechanism. And that's pretty much it. There are no gizmos and gadgets on this one, but it served me so well. <laughs> this suit so much especially the low register it was so beefy I remember I would go into different settings like a master class or a lesson and people would be like whoa you have a big low register especially for like a little kid you know because most of the time little kids don't have very much of a low register so that's one thing I loved about this flute I am going to be at the end of this video playing them all for you so that you can hear what they sound like Flute Center had to send me the updated version of this because sadly all the pretty much all the pads on this one are torn and need to be replaced. I did go to get this flute overhauled and the person I brought it to basically said it's going to be cheaper for you to just get a replacement flute than it is to fix this one up. So it's kind of sad because I loved it so much. I am going to attempt to play it at the end, but pardon any leaks or anything bad just because like I said, it's like super out of commission, but this was one of my very favorite flutes that I ever owned. The next flute that I ended up getting was in ninth grade and the main reason for this was in ninth grade, I kind of decided I wanted to pursue music as a career and hopefully get into a music school. And I just needed something that offered more resistance and allowed me to just like play full out. So that's why we ended up switching to this one right here. This is a Miyazawa 40. It is a pre-professional flute or a conservatory level flute. It is now known as a 402. If you're looking online, it's a 402 now. Um, so how did we pick this one? Well, my flute teacher was or is, I should say, she still is a Miyazawa artist and so she really loved their flutes and she had one sent out for me to try and I sounded good on it so that's what we ended up deciding on. And for the specs of this flute, the head joint and the body are both sterling silver, the keys and mechanism are silver plated, and it of course also has open holes, offset G. This one did not have any bells and whistles at all. Um, it was it was just pretty much standard, no split E or anything like that. Um, but this was a really, really great step up for me. But when I was a junior in high school, this was right before I was going to be doing college auditions and my teacher felt like I needed something even more than this flute right here. So luckily, she had this head joint right here laying around her closet. This is also a Miyazawa head joint. This one has a 9 carat lip plate right here and the riser is 14 karat gold and so this just offered me a little bit more resistance as well as just some more characteristics of gold which we've talked about in other videos. So this is the head joint that I use for all of my college auditions and what I got into Colburn with. And then I had this for a couple years while I was at Colburn as well. When I was a junior at Colburn Conservatory, Jim Walker and I decided that I needed a step up from my last flute. I needed something that offered more resistance, most likely something that was gold instead of silver. And so I went flute shopping. That took a really long time. I think I tried flutes for maybe four or six months, I literally tried all of the big brands that you can think of. And I narrowed it down to like four or five of them and we did a blind test with both Jim Walker and then the rest of my studio. And the unanimous decision was this flute, which happens to be of Miyazawa. So <laughs> my last two flutes have both been Miyazawa. So for the specs of this flute, it is 14 karat gold, the head joint and the body. The mechanism is all sterling silver. Of course, it has open holes and offset G, B foot joint, of course. Um, and this one, I decided to actually add some of the bells and whistles. So I have a split E mechanism, a C sharp trill key, as well as both of the rollers on the right hand. That makes my life so much easier, I cannot tell you. So going forward, all my flutes are definitely going to have that. So now I've been playing on this flute for 10 years or something like that. It's been a long time. Oh, I did want to mention now, this is now called the Miyazawa Elite. At the time, they just called it a Miyazawa 14 karat gold flute or something like that. But now it is the Miyazawa Elite if you're looking to get a flute similar to mine. Anyway, I love this flute and I love how I sound on it. 
I will say though, um, last convention in 2019 at the NFA convention, I was going through a lot of the flutes at the Flute Center's booth and just trying them out just for fun. And I ended up stumbling upon some all gold flutes and kind of fell in love with them. I definitely do not need an upgrade. I sound good and I'm very happy with this one, but it did make me want one. So maybe, you know, in a couple years or something, we'll end up doing that, we'll see. But the reason that I didn't end up going with all gold at the time, I did try all gold, but it was a little bit too much for me. The sound, uh, I sounded a lot better on gold with silver mechanism. Those, all those things, all the metals, and the placement of the metals and everything like that does make a pretty big difference. So that's the reason I ended up going with this. But some point I will probably end up having an all gold flute. There's another flute that I ended up getting a couple years ago that I want to share with you. This one is the Trevor James Virtuoso. It has a sterling silver head joint and body with silver plated keys. Of course, also open holes, offset G. B foot joint and it does have a split E mechanism. The reason that I ended up getting this is because I was doing more and more gigs that were in very close proximity to other people or they were outdoors and there was just a lot, <laughs> it was very scary to take my good gold flute with me to these gigs, but I still needed something that sounded good. So what I ended up choosing was this one and I absolutely love it. This flute has gone with me to so many gigs, including six months of Sunday service with Kanye West. This was the one that I played for Coachella. It has also been the one that I've played. I've played it at the Hollywood Bowl. I've also played it with a bunch of other artists, including Ariana Grande, Josh Groban, Sarah Brightman, and I can't even remember all of them, but this flute has been great though, just because I can take it with me and it still sounds amazing. And that way it gives me a little peace of mind that I'm not taking my 30 plus thousand dollar flute with me, but I can still sound good on this flute. Next up, I'm gonna play them all for you so that we can compare them. <laughs> Honestly, for this being a student model flute and this little thing, it sounds really good. I am super impressed. It's been a while since I've played on a flute like this. Since this one has not been fixed up in a very long time and given that pretty much all the keys are or the pads are completely just falling apart uh, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised especially that low register maybe you can hear how beefy it is I loved playing this flute anyway I'm gonna play a little bit more for you but you know it has leaks the pads are in terrible condition so <laughs> keep that in mind Okay, I'm gonna switch over to the other Jupiter, the new version, so that you can hear what that sounds like.
Okay, next up, I am going to play the Trevor James Virtuoso for you. <laughs> Next up is my first Miyazawa with the original head joint. So already, just to give you a little comparison, the sound is a lot bigger than my Jupiter. Uh, obviously this has a sterling silver body, so that is a big reason for that, and that was why I upgraded to this one. As you can tell, the upper register is a lot better than the Jupiter's just because, again, it's an upgraded flute. It also allows me to do a lot more tone colors. Let's try it out now with the gold lip plate. Already you can tell it has a much warmer sound than the last flute that I played. Of course, that a lot has to do with the lip plate being gold and it's providing more resistance for me and the characteristics of gold. So one thing I did forget to mention earlier is I actually play on this flute quite a bit. So if there is something that, let's say, is not super flute heavy and there's nothing like super exposed or I am playing second flute or something like that. Sometimes I will choose to play on this flute just to not overwork my gold flute so that it just stays in better working condition. But I still play on this one a lot and I love, 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 love the sound of this one too. That right there, the high register, huge, huge difference with this head joint. And last but not least, this is my gold Miyazawa. If you can't tell from this recording, this flute, it just has a massive low register. It just offers me a lot of tone colors and a really pretty like singing quality to the sound and I just love the sound of this flute. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Also, make sure to let me know what your flute journey has been like and what flutes you have played on. Thank you so much to the Flute Center of New York for making this series possible. Make sure that you guys are subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future flute videos. Also, follow me on Facebook and Instagram and I'll see you soon.